Welcome back everyone, and I am surrounded by monitors, dongles, plugs, ports, keyboards, and all the likes, and it's all about power. So with upcoming launches with graphics cards that are coming up down the road, and well, the apparent concern for power draw and power consumption seems to be something on everybody's mind. And that's actually, from a reviewer standpoint, something that's a little bit tricky for us to get. Now, there are different methods. Some are better than others. Probably down at the bottom is probably the worst one, is just opening up something like GPU-Z and hoping that the graphics card's reporting an accurate number, uh, even if that number may just be the GPU die itself and not even can take it, taking into consideration the memory or fans or LEDs. And then you got, then you got the, the, the classic kilowatt. Now the kilowatt is very useful for measuring total system power, which is a very important metric still because it tells you how much power is being pulled from the wall to power the whole system. But that doesn't give you a breakdown of the GPU. Now you could take GPU-Z and you could do some math with the total number of watts coming from the wall minus the idle watts minus the CPU load. But then it just gets really tricky because the more powerful the graphics card is, the more power it may demand from the CPU. That's especially true with stuff like the 9900K. You put a GT710 on it, it's going to look like it sips power. You put a 2080 Ti and run it at 1080p, well, you're going to find a whole different ball game there. Sure, you could run it at 4K and put all the load on the GPU, but everything else is still going on. So uh, the other method that's actually really useful is if you're familiar with using a multimeter, you can actually use the clamp and clamp around some of the cables on the PCI Express power cables as well as the plug going into the GPU, the PCIe port. Now the problem with that is you got to put it on a riser which extends it further away and then depending on how the riser is, if it's powered, you may get proper uh, readings from that. Otherwise, you still you can still get a lot more accurate with that if you're good with the math. It can convert amps, draws to watts, which isn't that hard. It's a very simple algorithm. But what we're here about today, it, to say all that, to say something simple, NVIDIA has gotten us set up with what they call their PCAT. Now it's the Performance Capture Analysis Tool. It's a little bitty Arduino setup that you just run uh, PCI Express Power ports through. It's got a little OLED readout and then you plug it into the GPU. The GPU does get picked up. It's on a little bitty riser there with uh, cables going into it and on a riser for the PCI expansion slot so that the GPU can sit nice and uh, safe. Now, before anybody questions it, it does not affect performance whatsoever. I uh, ran hundreds of tests to make sure across various cards it is PCIe Gen 4 compliant. Found out that from, you know, whenever we were first uh, get, getting briefed on this some time ago. And here it is. This is what we've got. Now, it comes with a riser board, comes with the cable or the module, and it comes with a few uh, cables that plug into the GPU goes up to three. Obvious that's pretty important because it looks like a lot of these uh, newer graphics cards have three eight pins. So those are there. It's got a cable that plugs right into the PCIe expansion riser. And then there's a micro USB cable that gives you the ability to plug it back into the computer that it's running off of so that you can use frame view to capture the, per, the, the wattage used through the duration of the benchmark that you're recording and it'll spit out a very easy to read performance per watt metric. Now that only works with NVIDIA cards because it's just their thing because of the way Radeon reports through software. Uh, this is comparing software. This, when you do it with FrameView, it compares the software readings to the hardware readings to see how close they are. Uh, so they can only validate with their own. However, with that USB cable, we can plug it into another computer, which is what we've got here. We've got a laptop set up here. In just a second, we're gonna pull the camera around and show you how this works and what it looks like, but we can monitor off system so that we have a very raw reading and it's in a graph form. You know what, I'm gonna stop talking. We're gonna pull it on around here. I've got the 2070 Super, so the RTX 2070 Super hooked up to a 4K panel, running Doom Eternal, Ultra Nightmare, 4K. It's able to break 60 FPS because that's really important because we're gonna look at something here in just a second that we find super interesting with that. All right, there you have it. See, this is the PCAT readout. This is Doom Eternal running. Now, I don't think you can see it on the camera over there, but it is running at 95 FPS. 
Now, when I do these testing, and these are real important because these are testing, this is gonna be the scene that I use going forward for the 4K 60 versus 4K unlocked. And that'll make more sense if you go over to the article linked in the description because it'll be a little bit more explained and there will be 5700 XT results in there because I think that that is super important for this. But right over here, you can see a total system power draw with the RTX 2070 Super. And you can see that it is staying right around the 200 up and you get a minimum, maximum and an average. Now you can reset these so that you can just, you know, keep it running if you're running the benchmark. You've got to reset the whole unit, log the data, hide the graphs, do all this fun stuff. But these are all of the sources of power that it's reading across the top. But I wanna show you something real fun here. And because this has come up in the past, you can actually monitor, that is the PCIe from the PCIe lane. So we know that that port is good for up to 75 watts and we can see it's sitting there right around 50. Now, if you go to add in, that's one, one of your eight pan cables and there is the other. So you can see it's getting most of its power through that eight pin cable. So the other one here is a six pin, then you can see the eight pin and then it's all totaled up up there. Now, this is what I was talking about, what's really fun to do on the system that we're monitoring here. So we go into the menu and I want to change it to, we're gonna leave it at 4K. That's not gonna change, but I'm gonna enable VSync because I wanna lock it at 60 FPS. Now this monitor does 144, so I had to actually change it to 60 so that we could lock it. Now it's locked at 60 and you can see the, F, the well, I almost said FPS, but the power draw dropped dramatically up there. So it went from the over 200 watts to about 175. It's bouncing between 170 and 180. So that's really cool. And if you let it sit, it'll just kind of keep going. Now this graph down here, I can easily change it to look at it over a 10 second period, a rolling 10 seconds to see how it changes there. Back to a minute to where it was. We can go 10 minutes. So you can see up to 10 minutes ago, one hour, which I haven't had it, I've had it going for a little while. So the cards had plenty of time to heat up, reach equilibrium on all of that stuff. Or you can go maximum, which is a really fun way to do it. So if you reset this, then as more data gets added, it gets squished in a little bit closer. But what this allows us to do is to see the real power that the GPU is doing at various resolutions. And since a lot of the cards that are coming out soon are gonna be focused on high performance, high refresh rate, high resolution. We wanted to see how current cards handled whenever you load things down. And one of the things about a locked frame rate, when you lock the frame rate at a certain resolution and, a very, and, and you can control the scene, then you're able to see what the actual uh, performance per watt looks like, rather than saying, well, it got this FPS over a benchmark and the total system used X amount of power, so therefore it must be this. No, this is able to show us the actual performance. We're able to monitor that, we're able to log it, and then we're able to say it takes, at 60 FPS, it takes 164 watts, and we'll pull up a calculator here, I think I have one. So we take, basically, you take 100 and 60 watts and then you divide it by 60 and it costs 2.66666 watts per frame. So watts per frame is gonna be a very interesting metric that we want to use instead of just saying performance per watt, it's watts per frame. So how many watts does it take for a graphics card to generate 60 frames at 4K in Doom Eternal. Very fun metric. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more on this and images rather than just video, that will be linked down in the description below. Let us know what you would like to see us do with this that you would find very interesting. That's more important to me is how I can take this and turn it into useful information for you, our viewer, our audience, our readers, and what have you. So I appreciate your time today. Look forward to hearing from you guys down in the comment section.